Welcome back. Today we're going to tie, uh, we're still hanging with the, with the terrestrial stuff today. We're going to tie a, the, probably the most simple fly, most overlooked fly maybe there is. It's a sunk ant. It's this one right here. <clears throat> this thing is really, when you get, I mean, there's so many ants out there, but in my personal opinion, the fly that you should never, I never see people fishing, and I think it's one of the most important flies there is in the planet. I don't care where you are in the world, ants are the first things to show up, last things to go away, and they're one of the most prolific things on the planet. And they're in every trout river in the world. There are ants of some size, sort, shape, color. They come in all kinds of colors from bright red to black. I mean, you just name it, they're there. But it's a fly, an ant, I mean, it's one of those things where they just don't offend trout. They just, they're in the water, they see them. You should always, if you're a lake fisherman, you should always have ants. If you're a stream fisherman, for sure you should always have them. And this particular one here, I fished this since I lived in Michigan. It's one of my favorites, the carpenter ants. But on the Madison, uh, the brown and the browner, just this brown black head one has just been a game changer for me, man. I mean, it, it is always my ace in the hole. If I'm fishing lakes and I if stuff's not going, I put a sunk ant on or a little 2018 uh, floating ant. Uh, I'm gonna show. I'm interested in a, a little bit of upgrade. This one I've got here is a little sunk ant with a pair of wings on it. You can see it's just a little tiny flight ant. Millions of these things around, millions. I mean, every trout river in the world has these things. And yet, it's almost impossible to see somebody fish one. You can fish this, but I mean, I'm doing the sunk one. You can nymph fish this, run it in any part of that. I know usually when I run this, like if I'm drop shot and we're, I'm gonna run it high, so it's, they're kind of up in the upper column. If you're getting, if you are having an issue, I don't care where you are, and things are, and you're just, especially if you're seeing fish moving and they just, they'll come towards you, put an 18 sunk ant on, and it's just this common thread ant, and I guarantee you, it's a game changer. They, they will eat this thing, they'll just grab it. They don't, they're so used to seeing ants in the water that they'll just, they just, they don't even move. They just kind of go like this and eat it. It just does not offend them. So I'm gonna tie this one on a size 12. And as much as I like to have the little ones with me, I would say a 12 and a 14 are the ants that I fish most of the time. I'm gonna have, a, I'm gonna just use a scud, a scud hook of any size. I don't care if it's a scud hook either. I just, looks cool to you. I like the looks of it. If it's a straight hook, it just, you know, like a short shank, uh, wet fly hook of any sort, tie it to match. Anything you, anything ant you see. And you can tie, I used to fish them in size 10s. Uh, we'd have those giant carpenter ants in Michigan and I would fish a 10. It would actually, but when I got done, they'd sink a dry fly. They were too heavy. That's why I went to the 12s. So, but the one I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna do, basically I'm gonna do this thread ant to here. And this is thread, hackle, thread. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna dial it up a little bit. I think you can all figure out once we get to this, You'd either, I can put a hackle on and show you. So I'm gonna use two colors of thread. I'm using three aught, just brown and black thread. And so, and I'm gonna start with this, give me you. I'm gonna start with this brown thread on the butt. We have a ton of flight ants out here at a certain part of the time of the year. In August, we'll get these giant flight ants and they're just, they're going and going and going, right? And they're everywhere, but and we ever, everybody wants to hit them. You get about two or three days if you're really lucky. The rest of the year, there are ants available, these things. They're just not quite so big. And so, but I'm going to go with this 12. I don't think they care about the size, to tell you the truth. Unless they're on just filtering on little tiny ones, I don't think they care. I just, I, I want this fly and everybody, I don't care where you live in the U.S., in the world, everybody should have this fly in their box. All right, so we're going to start here. And this is a, we're just going to start your thread. And this is when you can hit the fast forward. But as we said, we're doing this during the coronavirus lockdown. And this is, again, this could be part of your, anything that we're doing on that shootout for the terrestrial. It could be an ant, could be a hopper. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Watch your elbow. Watch my elbow, Jeremy says. You know how hard it is to tie with your elbow down trying to make, this is the most boring part of this whole thing. I'm gonna have to put my elbow up because I can't do it there. I'm just going to keep wrapping. And what you're seeing I'm doing is I'm going back and forth. 
You could use heavier thread yet. You could do whatever you want to build it. I've, I've tied this fly like this since I was a kid. It's one of the first flies that I actually learned to tie uh, when I was a kid. When when just so I, my dad would probably just to shut me up so I sit here and do this for hours. And so what you'll find is you kind of gotta you, you keep working back and forth, and you're gonna it's gonna slide off a little bit here and there. And you just want to get this bump, get it, you, it'll try to collapse on you. So you start wide and keep building back to the top, but it, the thicker your thread is, the faster that'll build, obviously. So I'm right to there, and I'm done. So I've got this body, I've got my hind end built on this thing, and it's simply going to switch colors here, come back. Now, regardless if I, if I was doing the original thread one right here, and I truly, truly do not think anything will outfish this. I, I don't like the ones that have the big epoxy buildups on them. There's too much glassy look to it. I don't like that as much. This, this basic stupid thread with a single turn on this particular one, I've got one turn and, and two max. I'm just taking, I like these, these brown badger style hen hackles. Any hackle, I don't care what hackle it is. I don't care, just... You would tie this in, just tie it in, and you'd give yourself one turn a hackle like that, and you're done. I'm not going to do that one, but I would be done. So I would tie this in. You can do two turns max, like I said, and then come in here, oops, and then just break it off and build up. But I'm not going to do that one. I'm just, this one's just sexier. I don't think it fishes better. But after you do a few of these things, you'll go out of your mind just wrapping thread. And so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to make it a little bit more interesting. But like I just said, I don't think you can improve on this stupid thread and, and lacquered ant. I, don't, I really don't. But I'm going to show you just because this is more fun. Uh, in the video we did two days ago, Johnny tells me never to do that because we don't know when we're going to do them. But we're going to be shooting these every three days for a while. We're doing this as long as we as the coronavirus is keeping us all locked up. So I took this pheasant rump patch and I pulled one of these green feathers. Uh, it's just they're really pretty feathers, and they're you know you don't you don't use a lot. People don't use these a lot for much. And this is a great little use for it. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going to come in here, pull this back, so you can see I've got it separated. I'm going to cut the tip of this feather off. Now I'm going to, I don't want a lot of, of, of legs on this thing. You know, four or five would be plenty. So I'm going to tie this in, and again, super fast fly. Just give it a loose turn. Now pull this back, and they've got long legs. Now you can look at this one. See how long that is? Even if they're a little bit too long, that's cool. But the thing about these wings, whoops, talk too much. The thing about these, when we tie these in, it can even, I tie them, I leave them kind of long. It can even kind of look like wings sitting back because, you know, some of them have wings, some of them don't. Uh, the flight ones, the females, you know, that's, that's a different time of the year. But, uh, you know, it just looks cool when, it, when they're sitting back there. So I'm going to tie in, and you can see what I'm doing right here. I came in, and when I cut that notch out, so this is going to automatically split those legs, right? And just come in here, pull it, get back, and do a turn, just one turn. I can hardly see that. Should have put the regular glasses on. Now we're going to come back right to, don't go all the way to where you tied this brown. Leave a little gap. They're, man, they're almost invisible between their segments. It's just, they look like they should just break in half. So make a nice little bump here, same as we did before. Back and forth, just keep building up in the middle. Doesn't have to be huge. Doesn't have you don't want it as big as the one in the back. So we've got the pump and work forward. Get that now. Spread these apart just one more time, just a little bit. I got one broke off it's right there. We should have cut that off. Now I'm going to pull this through. And basically, what this is for, other than it looks cool, is I'm pulling it through to separate those legs. Uh, I'm just arranging it, and it gives it this really cool little shell back, like this. And now we're just going to tighten that down. 
We don't want much buildup here. Bingo. Now he's got his legs. I got a little bit of a stem there. I'm not too worried about that whip finish. You'll see why in a second, because this fly is done. And that bead, I've got a little black glass bead. With their heads, they've got that big eye thing, and it just, and they're pretty reflective when you're looking at them. It's, you could do any bead, you don't have to put a bead in. This is not reflective. This fly right here, nothing outfishes this fly. But this is a hell of a lot more fun to tie and funner to look at for sure. So on this one, and you can, if you look at it, I've got lacquer on these legs, right? And I used to go in and I would sit and just try to get this thing all smooth and leave the hackle all like that. And then I realized that when, when it gets wet, you can hardly see it, right? You leave a little lacquer. I don't intentionally put it on, I just don't care. I've tried dipping them completely. I don't like that as much. And so, but on this one, these legs are off to the side, so it, it won't be a big deal. So just come in and just lacquer this up, get a nice cover. That's why I wasn't too worried about my whip finish because you're going to lacquer this thing up and it's going to, that thread's going to absorb this stuff. So, and, and again, uh, won't matter on the, on the, uh, terrestrial, if you're going to do an ant, but you can't use any synthetics on the, if you didn't see, uh, Mondays on the Gartside hopper, you got to watch that to see that we're doing this competition. So you've got to send us your fly and it's kill the Corona contest. And so whichever one, whichever, <clears throat> we're going to do a, we're doing category streamer, terrestrial, dry. And as long as this coronavirus is holding us down, we're going to do it. If you win, you send your fly in. If we choose your fly for that category, we send you a $250 gift certificate. At the end, we're going to pick, we're going to put them on Instagram, Facebook, wherever we're going to put them. And we have people's choice. And if you win that, you're going to get either a, a Maverick fly rod, payload fly rod, or a Renzetti vice. Of your choice so it's pretty cool but that's all there is to it and when I was saying when I was talking about that I was talking about not using uh, a big epoxy because on the terrestrial flies when you submit them no synthetic no synthetics no foam no epoxies it has to be just thread this one and you can use lacquer for that thread or I mean just naturals so here's that little ant you can see it's it's super simple the legs are back like this of course when it gets wet they're not gonna be out like to the side like that and I didn't I should I'll probably give this another coat of lacquer just so it because it's sinking in right now but the key to this fly is that and again I'll go back to this one I'm just going to put them beside themselves not a lot of difference right they both got little bumpy heads they're about the same to tie it takes me longer to put that damn bead on it does it tie this thing you should have seen me trying to get that on there it's frightening. Jeremy's over here trying to help him. Get away from me. But so here's the flies side by side. And, and trust me on this one. I swear to you, this is a fly that every single angle should have with them. And I don't care when. It's just it's a complete code cracker when things are tough. And so there's the two beside them. Blackhead doesn't mean this great fly to let kids tie, make the you know, learn thread control. But you can see them right beside each other, top and bottom. Not a lot of difference between them. I've got the red version here. This guy, I'll put him in there. There's places where you'll see them where they get really, really bright red in there. At the California, I've seen these things where they're really, I don't know what the difference is, but really bright red. I don't think it makes that much difference. You can see it's just that distinct segment change. That's what really, really makes that fly sing because it just, it's so simple. It doesn't offend that fish. It looks at it, it goes by, boom, it eats it. And so, and it should be in every box. I like 12 to 12, 14 mostly. And then I keep some 18s and 20s with me when I'm on smaller water and I've just got lots of flight ants, those little tiny jobs. Uh, really, really a code cracker. Again, remember to go back and see the other one, our competition. You got to send us the fly. Uh, like I said, if you win it, be safe out there, man. Everybody's in this together. Hope you like that. Hope it helps you out.